Hi there, everyone. Welcome to The Daily Gardener. I'm your host, Jennifer Ebling. It's July 22nd. Have you ever tried drying flowers? Successfully drying flowers is such a joy. Some flowers actually even look better when they're dried. Now, there are many options for drying flowers. Air drying is the simplest. Then, of course, there's pressing. And if you've never tried sand drying a blossom, you should give it a shot. Just fill a microwave-safe container with a layer of silica sand, put a bloom on top of the sand, and then bury the bloom. Put it in the microwave along with a cup of water, and then heat it in 30-second increments. Your flower should be completely dried in about two to three minutes. Here's today's brevities. On this day in 1842, Asa Gray arrived at Harvard. He didn't have to start teaching until the following spring. Gray wasn't a great speaker or teacher, but he was respected by his peers and his students. And it's the anniversary of the death of the physician and botanist Hugh Elgernon Weddell, who died on this day in 1877. Weddell specialized in South American flora, and he collected specimens there for five years. Before he left Paris, Weddell was asked to look into the cinchona, or fever bark tree. Cinchona is the source of quinine. Weddell did his job. He found multiple regions where the tree grew. In addition, he discovered 15 species of the genus cinchona. Weddell's seeds helped establish the cinchona forests that were brought to Java and other islands in the East Indies. And it's the birthday of Cornelius Herman Muller, who went by Neil. He was an American botanist and ecologist, and he was born on this day in 1909. Muller pioneered the study of allelopathy. Allelopathy occurs when one plant species releases chemical compounds that affect another plant species. Gardeners know that the black walnut is a prime example of this. In addition to the leaves, black walnut trees store allelopathic chemicals within their buds, the hulls of the walnuts, and their roots. And today in 1938, the St. Cloud Times ran a story about Miss Louise Klein Miller. Miller, at the age of 84, was retiring as the supervisor of Cleveland's Memorial Gardens after supervising them for over a quarter of a century. Collinwood is a neighborhood on the east side of Cleveland, On Ash Wednesday, March 4, 1908, the Collinwood School Fire became one of the country's biggest tragedies. The school had only two exits. The construction created a chimney effect. Almost half of the children in the building died. In 1910, Louise Klein Miller planned the Memorial Gardens to honor the 172 children, two teachers, and one rescuer who died in the blaze. The year before, the Ohio General Assembly passed legislation that a memorial should stand in perpetuity The memorial is comprised of a large planting bed. The plantable area is roughly 20 feet by 40 feet. There is a deep bench around the perimeter. Students grew flowers in a school greenhouse for the memorial. Over the span of 70 years, the garden gradually fell into neglect. There have been a few attempts to make sure that the garden continues to be a meaningful memorial. The struggle to maintain the memorial continues. But when it was new, back in July of 1910, the garden also included a large lily pond, 
And there was a touching article that ran in the Santa Cruz newspaper that described the new memorial garden. Here's what it said. There was a poet who said he sometimes thought that never blows so red the rose as where some buried Caesar bled, that every hyacinth the garden wears drops in her lap from some once lovely head. Then there will never be lilies so fair as those that will bloom in the lily pond that is to be on the site of the Collinwood School. In Unearthed Words, here's a quote from Ralph Waldo Emerson about the end of summer. Our fear of death is like our fear that summer will be short. But when we've had our swing of pleasure, our fill of fruit, and our swelter of heat, we say we have had our day. Today's book recommendation is Secret Gardens of the Cotswolds by Victoria Summerlee. This gorgeous book features 20 special British gardens and the people who own and manage them. The book is photographed by Hugo Ritson Thomas and written by Summerlee, both who live in this special part of England. Beginning with the cover of the book, the pictures are gorgeous, and the garden stories include their fascinating paths, as well as the recent story of each property. This is a lovely book, great gift book. For today's garden chore, prepare a spot in your garden shed garage, pantry, or kitchen for drying flowers. Repurpose a pot rack or do something simple like stringing some twine between two eye hooks. Sometimes just creating a space can inspire you to take some cuttings and bring beautiful blooms indoors. One of my favorite photos is a simple row of hydrangea cuttings drying upside down in my kitchen. Bliss. Finally, here's something sweet to revive the little botanic spark in your heart. While researching Louise Klein Miller, I ran across a delightful story about her time as a teacher of horticulture. Here's what it said. Miller had been telling a crowd of pupils about the different insects that attack plants, and she warned them specifically against the San Jose scale. She suggested that they go to the school library to learn the remedy for it. One young woman went to the librarian the next morning, and she said she wanted something about the San Jose scale. Without even looking up from her desk, the librarian said, go to the music department. Thanks for listening to The Daily Gardener. And remember, for a happy, healthy life, garden every day. The Daily Gardener is produced weekdays in lovely Maple Grove, Minnesota. You can find complete show notes over at thedailygardener.org. And be sure to share the show with your garden friends. You can find The Daily Gardener on all your favorite social media, Instagram, Twitter, and Pinterest, and of course, Facebook. While you're over at Facebook, don't forget to join The Daily Gardener community. Just search for these three words, Daily Gardener Community. The group will pop right up and then request to join. Finally, I want to thank my team at Podfly Productions, where my fabulous editor is Eric Begay. Have a great day in the garden, and we'll see you tomorrow.